Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about the gem that I found here in Amsterdam, in Museum van Loon. So, one of the best things that I did living in Amsterdam was to buy Museum Kart, uh, giving you the opportunity to go and visit a great list of museums for free. And I started exploring that several years ago and one of the most beautiful representations of the Golden Eve, meaning uh, the Golden Age of Netherlands, was Museum van Loon. But I'm not going to talk about Museum van Loon. Museum van Loon is an excellent example of the highest uh, development of life in 17th century in Netherlands. Uh, Museum van Loon was basically the house of a very wealthy family who got their riches in 1700s. And uh, one interesting uh, line in, in what I saw there, in, in that luxury, um, very beautiful decorations, internal decorations and portraits, is actually a number of very influential women from that uh, family. And in one of the drawing rooms, which is uh, full of very precious subjects and very expensive portraits, I actually saw uh, a corner where you can see the photographs of the lady of the house. By the way, she was uh, she was grandchild of uh, famous uh, Madame Borski. Borski, who was actually the first banker woman in Netherlands, who actually based the the, the biggest uh, national bank of the Netherlands, and uh, she was she actually spent a lot of time in Montpellier in uh, France with creme de la creme of uh, European aristocracy, and in that corner I saw several photographs, uh, for example uh, with Koning uh, Wilhelmine, Queen uh, Wilhelmina, who actually reigned the longest time among all Netherlands monarchs and other important figures from history. And unlike other artifacts which are presented in a museum, I saw a very familiar photograph. And this is the portrait, signed portrait of Elena di Italy, previously Elena di Montenegro. Uh, her original name and origin is uh, Jelena Cernogorska. Jelena Cernogorska was the princess of the ruling house of Montenegro. Her father was Nicholas I and her mother uh, Milena Vukotic, the queen of uh, Montenegro. Eventually, after very well-rounded education that she got in Cetinje, back then actually the ruling place of Montenegro, she was schooled in Smolsky uh, Institute in uh, St. Petersburg in uh, Russia. She was fluent in several languages, she, she was very, very smart, educated. She was fluent in French since little girl because she had a governess from uh, Switzerland and she was educated to uh, understand the rules and mechanisms of politics, so she had possibility to influence European politics. And uh, I'm not going to go in history because you can find that elsewhere on internet, but uh, she became Queen of Italy, she was married of the Prince of uh, Naples, uh, Vittorio Emanuele, when she was still Prince. Prince, and later he became uh, uh, Emanuele I, actually the, the ruling king of Italy. But what is important to, to remember about Elena of Italy, uh, I, I, I just want to give you some uh, fun facts which, which are for me very interesting and I, I hope you would find it interesting too. For example, uh, in order to become the queen of Italy, she has to uh, convert from Eastern Orthodox uh, creed to Catholicism. And her mother, Queen Milena of uh, Montenegro, was so distressed about that change of creed 
that she basically refused to attend the uh, wedding in Rome with Vittorio Emanuele. Elena very, very fast became the support of uh, her husband and I'm not going to go in politics and the ruling house of Italy many other people are, are dealing with that but I, I just wanted to, to say how uh, influential he was in that time. Uh, uh, funny thing was that people in Van Loon Museum actually was unaware whose portrait it is and what that meant and uh, let me try to explain what that single piece of paper linked here with her original signature actually meant. Elena of Italy was very atypical uh, figure in European uh, aristocracy because she didn't like very much to mingle in aristocratic events and, and uh, things uh, famous in that time. She preferred to stay with uh, her children. She had five children with Vittorio Emanuele and uh, she was actually devoted, devoted for charitable work. And when you're reading those things from history, it, it turns out to be that she had very modern mind and very new ideas which we are taking for granted today. For example, in, uh, she became queen in 1900 after the assassination of uh, the king who was her father-in-law and she immediately became engaged in charitable work in, in Italy and she was Today somebody would say that she was uh, doing that for PR, but actually she gave her personal example of that. For example, she started um, as a princess of Savoy because her husband actually was originally prince of Naples. Um, she started a charity where she invited uh, all rich ladies of Italy to donate a piece of their jewelry to support the orphan children who were actually children of those who died for Italy, who were soldiers and railway workers. And actually she started Princess of Savoy uh, charity to make possible educational support, uh, actually stipendships for those children so they can make a living of some, something higher than actually they were destined to. And she basically, uh, invented that uh, by her own example, she actually uh, donated her jewelry first and then ladies followed and uh, it was a, a great uh, thing of, of uh, unheard of that time. So in the 1908 uh, it happened that a devastating earthquake happened in Messina and Elena of Italy as a queen jumped in uh, steadily and she basically came with the uh, mother queen, uh, her mother-in-law, and they helped actually injure people on a hospital which were based on ship. And she was very active in uh, acquiring uh, charitable donations and this is actually her invention. She figured out that if she starts selling uh, her photos, her signature, she can collect a lot of uh, money to help those in need, especially uh, people who are injured in catastrophes like this, that and people who are simply poor. And she basically uh, had a network of women who were selling that on charitable stands and I guess what I saw in Museum van Loon is actually a part of, of that charitable action that Elena of Savoy uh, uh, invented, which is followed by many um, famous people and people who are celebrities now, but with totally different interests, which is completely oriented on something which is opposite that she invented. One of her very close contacts was uh, Koningin Willemijn van uh, Nederland. I learned uh, a lot about this forgotten queen uh, reading um, scientific and historical documents. Uh, for, for example, when uh, First World War struck, she was the first inspector of volunteering nurses of Italian Red Cross and she jumped herself uh, to volunteer first. 
a nurse uniform because she was working with the sick and diseased and uh, especially with wounded people because it was terrible uh, war as we all know it and for example um, she teamed up with uh, the mother of her husband to open hospitals in two of their palaces uh, Palazzo Quirinale and Villa Margherita actually uh, were transformed in hospitals during the First World War. Since she had experience in politics and she had an uh, eye for certain details, you know, she personally knew people who were making that politics, although male, but, but for example, uh, she was uh, in very close contact with a Russian ruling uh, house. Actually, uh, her husband asked her hand on coronation of the Russian Tsar back then and uh, she knew personally many significant rulers and queens and uh, when she realized that the second world war is to come in uh, 1939 when german occupied poland and uh, united kingdom and france actually declared the, declared the war uh, to uh, nazistic germany she actually wrote six significant letters letters to queens of the northern and central european countries that were still neutral back then and those were queen alexandrine of denmark queen wilhelmine of netherlands grand duchess charlotte of luxembourg queen uh, elizabeth of belgium then queen joanna of bulgaria which was actually giovanna of italy who is going to become the uh, tsaritsa of uh, bulgaria and Queen Mother Maria of Yugoslavia, who was, as we know, a, princess, Roman, a Romanian princess who became uh, the, the, the Queen of uh, Yugoslavia. And she actually wrote in those letters that she appealed to them to use their influence to prevent the catastrophe of World War. That appeal didn't work out. A majority of ruling families and ruling houses actually lost their power. Her daughter Mafalda actually died in Buchenwald in 1944. I'm not going to talk about the details about uh, politics and, and uh, what happened in history. Everybody can find that. But I, I just wanted to remind ourselves of details of someone who was in position to use her interest in politics to get in the right direction but failed nevertheless she tried and after the the, the war her husband abdicated her son was ruling just for a month and uh, she basically was forced to go in exile uh, in Egypt where they were welcomed by uh, Egyptian uh, King Farouk I and uh, consequently her husband died in 1947 in Alexandria in Egypt and she died later in Montpellier in France in 1952 and after, 65 years after her death uh, her remains were transferred to Italy uh, where she is buried uh, close to remains of her son and uh, she is buried in, in a cemetery of Picofonte in the chapel of San Bernardo in 2017. This is close to Turin in Italy. So I uh, just want to uh, encourage you to find more about female characters from our past who tried to use their influence, but alas, they couldn't stop crazy male politics, wars and things like that. I hope that uh, people from Van Loon Museum who are act actively working on the heritage that we have from female figures in our history in significant families in ruling houses would be visible and uh, we should study that in order to learn from the past. I just wanted to conclude that Princess Jelena of Montenegro, originally Jelena Petrovic Niegos, and later Queen of Italy, Elena van Italy, uh, was not so much mentioned in media. We don't know much about her, but at least I, I followed that trace that I saw in uh, Van Loon Museum in Amsterdam and uh, actually figured out that 
her signed photograph from the period between two wars, probably before 1939, was cherished in that museum, but alas, without description. I guess this is before the time where, when she wrote to uh, Koning in Villemain for Van Holland, actually, uh, as she wrote to the six uh, queens of neutral countries before the World War II actually striked, and I just wanted to remind ourselves that there were there were some people, uh, both female and male, who tried to prevent the catastrophe, but they were minority. Thank you for listening. <laughs>